In a world where LeBron James makes $136 per second, $9,700 per minute, I, Kayla Bushy, train for the Olympics. I make $21,697 a year. Damn! You heard me. <laughs> I really had a different idea of the money that I would be making post-college, but kindergarten Kayla and first and second grade Kayla wanted to be a professional athlete and they didn't know about student loans and stuff like that. <laughs> so this, what I'm telling you in this video is how I live and train off of short of $22,000 a year. Kayla, what's your job? What do you do? I know, <laughs> I know you do track and field, but what's your real job? Like, how do you make money? I get asked these questions all the time. I figured it would be a good day to talk about money and how I'm able to make my schedule around my life goal, which is becoming a professional track and field athlete and going to the Olympics and kicking butt. Like I watch videos of people and they just say things like work harder or get another job. Like how are you supposed to do that if you're supposed to train five or six hours a day, afford a gym membership. Afford going to a track, afford going to track meet, afford going on a plane to go to nationals. You finally qualify. Plane ride costs you $400, 500 round trip, then you have to pay for a hotel, then you have to pay for transportation once you're at the venue. Like how do you afford all that kind of stuff? Work a flexible enough job that lets you do that plus train. The number one thing that I had to do was find a flexible job. I think it's better, at least for me, it was better to have two flexible part-time jobs that paid well, a little bit more what one regular job would pay. Now it's not gonna be the job of your dreams. I have now worked at Starbucks, Wells Fargo, as a bank teller for a little while. Supposed to be a security officer, but they actually put me at the front desk as a concierge. And it allowed me to train in the mornings and then I could either work nights. But when I first started, I just worked weekends. And as soon as you go, okay, my real job is training and I need to come up with this much amount of money to cover the costs of what it takes for me to live, it's gonna be way easier to go into work knowing that you're supporting yourself in your dream. So how are you about to get a flexible job? Because generally, I swear, most of the jobs I have, it comes from people that I know. The best jobs, especially like part-time, flexible jobs are literally going to come from you asking people like, Hey, I know you work here and I think it would really, I think I'd do well in that job. Do you have any suggestions of what I should put on my application or things like that? And then nine times out of 10, your friend's going to be like, Oh, put me down as a reference or they're going to say something that's going to help you get that job. Anything that you can do from a computer. It's amazing because you have, remote possibilities because that means you could get home from training and then you could work having that has been a huge help for me my second thing is know your budget i think the hardest thing for me when i was leaving was not knowing how much money i had coming in and going out and then at the end of the month i was like wow it's already time to pay rent again and i don't really have enough money and I don't know what to do about it. I actually have my budget here. Funny enough, my mom helped me make this budget. She created the, the sheet for me. The first section of the budget is just the income. Income. <laughs> um, how much are you making per month? The next section is your fixed expenses. There's little things like yeah, your food, household supplies, clothing, work, leisure, shoes, laundry, medical insurance, medical dental copays, so my overall totally total monthly income comes out to $1,480. That combines two different jobs, two part-time jobs. Now, I know that doesn't sound like a lot of money. You know why? 
It is. <laughs> um, but then progress happens. And then I start to see like, oh, wow, I'm getting better at training or wow, wow, I'm jumping further or my body doesn't hurt all the time. When you can look at the money and your expenses, then you're going to be able to see what kind of things you can do. And you can start to plan like, oh, I actually want to have money for nationals when nationals comes up or things like that. Number three, live with roommates. I am 26 and a lot of people who are my age, at least on Facebook, which is a terrible place to try to think about like how people are doing in their lives, are starting to own homes and have kids and are moving away. If you don't want to live in your parents' house, you have to get roommates. It's like the hardest thing to do without a roommate. I've lived with a roommate for so long and it makes such a difference to be able to split rent with someone, to split utilities with someone. It's not going to be the most comfortable until you've created enough part-time work or work in general to afford to be able to live in a space by yourself, which is okay. Working towards becoming a professional athlete, anybody whose story who's become great, they did not grow up in a eight bedroom house, 16 bathroom mansion. Now don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are people who've been like that, but most of them are us that we're going to have these amazing stories to tell and it's kind of like a passage of right that we're going to fight through and create our own financial freedom from this. How are you going to find roommates? How are you going to find roommates that aren't crazy? Hello, Clarice. How are you going to find roommates that aren't going to use your dishes and your salt and your pepper and your food and go through your stuff? That might happen. Places look for roommates. You can look for roommates on Craigslist. You can look for roommates on Facebook. I know it seems really scary when you first start doing it, but after a while, you realize that you can bring a friend with you to vet your future roommates. And usually, if you can get a good read on someone, you're gonna have an okay roommate experience. Now, if you're not good at reading people, bring along a friend who is good at reading people who can say, okay, Kayla, they were like weird. Don't go, don't live with them. It's not a bad thing to find roommates because there's literally people who are in the same situation as you and me who need roommates. So you're going to find somebody who needs somebody. Okay, my next one is a really big one. It's decrease the cost of your living expenses. The biggest thing that helped me be able to train more was moving from Nashville which costs me, and it, with roommates, this is with roommates, $500 a month because there's four or five roommates. And then that's for housing. Then coaching, like having a coach, cost me between $500 and $1,000 a month. But I didn't realize when I left college and moving into a training camp and working with other athletes and coaches, I didn't realize that everything costs something. So the coach's time costs something. You have to buy a membership, that costs something. You have to have a new place to live, that costs something. You have to put down first month's security deposit, that costs something. As soon as I moved from Nashville to practically the border of Iowa, Iowa and Illinois, I dropped my like, cost of living by around $1,500 to $2,000 because I wasn't paying for a coach anymore. Now I'm not saying don't go without a coach, but I'm saying it might make sense for you to learn and start to coach yourself and then have the spare money to go visit other coaches to go get training for a week or to consult on a video until you have enough money or a sponsorship that's going to help you pay for a coach. And that's the situation I'm in. And it's not for everybody. There has to be some discipline in your training to be able to train by yourself. But it's the situation that's worked out for me. So if that can work out for you too, I think that'd be awesome. Another part of decreasing your cost of living 
is owning what you have. Now, I don't mean like go out and buy furniture or decorate your house. I mean that if you have a car, you're better off buying an older car than making car payments every month on a newer car. That also goes for cell phones. You're better off owning a cell phone. Me, look, I still have a 5S. I know that sounds so first world. Right now, I think the best iPhone out there is an 11 Pro Max. Wow. I still have a 5S. It doesn't even get like the general updates. I have to update this soon and I hate that I have to update it. Not paying the extra 30, 40 bucks a month to have the newest iPhone or not paying a $400 bill or 250 bill every month for a car, it's just freeing. It's nice to know that I own it. It was better for me to save up the money to go all in and buy a car. And that was an upgrade from a 2001 Honda. And I would have kept the Honda but little baby called the silver bullet couldn't handle all the track meets and driving and so my transmission was failing i digress i was able to buy outright and then that way my insurance is lower my i don't have a car payment every month speaking of which stop decorating don't decorate your apartment until you have money to put in your savings account do not decorate your apartment. I know the decorated apartment's nice. I talk about it all the time. This bed that I'm sitting on, this bed is from my roommate. She got this headboard in bed because a hotel was closing down and they were getting rid of all their beds and headboards. The couch in my living room, that's a gift from my mother because her and her partner, or significant other, bought a new couch. So I got their old couch. My cat has peed on that couch on five separate occasions. Guess what I did? Clean that bitch. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have curtains in my apartment. It came with blinds. That was awesome. Decorating right now is a luxury. I am very happy to give that up right now to be training for the Olympics, training to become a professional athlete. That's like no brainer. I'll do that, no problem. My next thing is barter what you can. If you have a skill, that skill could be you can cut grass. That skill could be you're really good at cleaning. That skill could be you make websites or logos or do Facebook. Use it. Barter that with somebody else to get what you need. I've already bartered Pilates, massages, yoga, sessions help for helping people with their social media it's so uncomfortable the first time you say like hey would you actually mind bartering and you're going to get people who are going to say no i don't want to barter it's either cash for this or nothing at all but the few times you get yeses you build relationships with those people and you have a skill that they need too so if you don't have a skill which i highly don't think you do not have a skill you know how to do something so I just wanna, want you to just remember, I have to remind myself too, it's not gonna be like this forever. Most athletes, like when they get the big time, like let's say Serena Williams, LeBron James. LeBron James. Those people were incredible from a young age, but it still took them 10 years to get to the mastery of their sport, to win their first US Open, or to be picked up to play in the NBA. If you start off and say like, I wanna become like me, senior year of college, I want to become a professional athlete. People thought I was crazy. But the thing is, is I know that I can be patient for those 10 years. Now, if it happens before the 10 years, thank you. But it generally takes like a grind of 10 years. I do it of, win, win, like, win, no this or having to work a few jobs or training here or there or cutting this person's grass and being uncomfortable to be able to get in the spot where you want to be where people are like oh my gosh i know that athlete and they're making videos like this about how they're gonna train and get through it so we're gonna be okay it'll be interesting i cannot wait to do a video 
two years from now, three years from now, that goes, oh my gosh, I'm making this much money a month. I got a sponsorship with this company and this company and this company, and I'm preparing for the 2024 Olympics, and it's gonna be amazing. So <laughs> hang in there. You're gonna accomplish your goals too. I hope these can help you in some way. I wanted to give some like actual concrete things that you can do. Um, okay, I have to go lift and I need to ice my body, but it was really nice hanging out with you and I will see you soon.